keep repeating this. So apologies, I'm gonna to have to repeat a few things up just for a, a minute. So this class has, begins with the discussion of the seven goddesses of Greece, but how they were in Crete when the culture was female, it was the worship of the goddess. So it was the goddess who, who ran things or everything was an emanation from the goddess. So it was very nurturing, very creative. They didn't have a military. There's no you know, indication that they had military equipment or anything like that. The culture was basically based on trade, uh, creating trade bonds. So you had an incentive to get along and not fight. Um, the only reason they think that culture died off, there were two possibilities. One is an earthquake and sort of, you know, flooded it out. And the other one is actually the Mycenaeans came and conquered them and then everything changed. But um, each of these goddesses represent living for the sake of something greater than yourself. So there's justice, there's honor, there's beauty, there's uh, motherhood, fertility, and there's, so there's seven of them. And each of them has a sacred passion. It, in order to have a, a flourishing culture and a flourishing life, every individual needs to be engaged to some extent in this aspect of life. Um, and then the culture in general has to nourish and encourage women to develop all their capacities. Um, and let's see, so we, so we talk about each of these goddesses, what she was like as a kid. This is called feminist union psychology. What she was like as a kid, adolescence, relationship to boys, whether they get married, what their marriages are like, uh, what kind of person they marry, how they relate to their partner, whether they go to college, um, why they go to college, uh, what kind of career they have or whether they don't have a career, what kind of mother they are, or whether they're not a mother or they don't like being a mother, um, and then how they deal with old age, older age, and grandparenthood, and things like that. So feminist union psychologists have figured out that there are these deep-seated patterns. And so women follow these deep patterns, but then patriarchy wounds them. And so we do talk about how male domination has many, many dimensions, and they cripple women in all these ways, in their basically their sexuality, their notion of masculine and feminine or some other alternative, the expectations and the nature of marriage, the relationship is, is male domination, um, ch child raising, how we use language, um, how the educational system works, what kind of thinking, what kind of subjects are respected, the way the tests work, um, what gets rewarded if it's competitive or cooperative, um, how people get socialized, what the religion is like, the arts, uh, the laws, how the legal system works, economics, politics, and the relation between culture and the natural world. So all of those things are gendered to the disadvantage of women. We also discuss the impact of race, class, ethnicity, uh, post-colonialism, colonialism and post-colonialism, environmental degradation and economic globalization. So um, during this period of exploitation, you know, the Westerners or the Northerners have exploited natural resources and they've exploited developing countries, the human resources, and, and they, they exploit men, but women 
suffer even more, right? They suffer at the hands of the colonizers and they also suffer at the hands of their husbands because the husbands are being oppressed and they just feel like they, they ought to have, you know, some power. And so it can, it can end up, you know, making sure you exert your power in relation to your wife because you feel very powerless in relationship to the um, people above you in the social economic hierarchy. Um, okay, so when we're discussing the goddesses, this is what I hope, this is my goal, is that basically together we start writing a book about how women's lives are changing because they are changing so dramatically, especially in the developing countries. Um, there's just, you know, you are 20 years old, 19 years old. By the time you're my age, oh my gosh, like women's lives in your country will, they will have so many more opportunities. They'll be doing so many interesting things. And like you're on the cutting edge, you're the pioneers. And so I want to send you out, you know, to do a lot of research on what's going on with feminism in Bangladesh or what's not going on, right? What are the obstacles? Because in your generation, you, you need to push back against those obstacles. And what's going on in Nepal? What's going on globally about poor women versus rich women? And that's a big problem. And then Melanie can, can do it, can, you know, bring in with America. Like America is maybe 50 years ahead, maybe, but America is experiencing a backlash, right? And so Melanie can bring in that. And so hopefully Melanie can tell stories that would, that would be sort of cautionary tales to the students from the developing countries saying, okay, okay, make sure you don't do this. Um, as you're moving forward, then Melanie can say, oh yeah, in my country, women can do that, but then they abuse that power or they, whatever. I just think you could have a really good discussion at, because you are the same generation, but you're from a developed country and developing countries, right? And so your countries and women in your countries are going to be relating to each other for the next 50 years. So um, my job is to just sort of organize the class, get you to read some stuff, but it's like red meat. You know, you guys go eat it and figure out how to react to it. Um, and then I've, most of the stuff that I've done, and I've published a few things about uh, feminism, but when I was your age, there was no, nothing to read, really very, very little written by, for, and about women, uh, white women, anybody. So all the poetry classes I had, all the history classes, you know, they were all about privileged men. Um, and in grad school, all this stuff. So even in the lifetime between my age and your age, there's been this huge explosion um, in the developed countries, but then it's just, you know, beginning in the developing countries. So I think I can bring some things to the table, right? I can remind you when you get frustrated because it just seems like there's so many obstacles. Uh, I could say, yes, there are. That's why women have to work together, make sure not to demonize, you know, compete against each other, or criticize each other, because there's just so much work to do. Um, and so sort of, I can bring in the big picture um, perspective, and then you can, you know, bring in your perspectives and I will send you out um, to, in, for, for every goddess, I want you to go find someone, hopefully from your country, Nepal or Bangladesh, who is like a Demeter, who is well-known in the public 
I, right? So you can just start developing this history of women in your country or in a nearby country, a developing country. And um, so then um, Kasturi can figure out how that does connect to women's psychology, right? So um, anyway, that's kind of where we're going. Um, students will give examples of, first of all, people you know whose life story matches the pattern. And then you look at women in the public eye, right? They're leaders of a movement or an NGO or the United Nations or some organization in their country. And so the papers that you write, you write one paper on when we finish the section on the goddesses, on which one you identify with most, which one or which combination. So while we're doing each one, you think of somebody you know. It might be somebody your age, but oftentimes you can't see the pattern until somebody, you know, your mother's generation or your aunt or your grandmother, because then it will be clearer, you know, what type they are. Um, but by the end of the section that we do, then you have to figure out, well, what, you know, what sort of drives me? What am I most passionate about? And the traditional liberal arts education has been about figuring out what you're really passionate about. You have to take all these courses that it would never occur to you to take, right? You have to take them. But in the process of taking them, you find out about yourself. And you find about how many different sacred passions there are in human life, that there's many, many good things to pursue, to have a good culture, a civilization, um, and a high quality of um, a social and political life. So that would be one paper. There's another research paper, not a long research paper, just three references. Uh, of some woman or some movement or organization that's of particular interest to you. So again, if Kasturi is interested in psychology, she might do a little bit of research on some branch of psychology, or if there's some movement called women in psychology or something like that. So I did teach philosophical psychology. And so I can, I will point out that I will actually list the paper topics of the students in that class because they, they um, had, you know, wrote about a lot of different branches of psychology today, the way it's practiced. Um, but anyway, so you figure out something you're interested in. And then the final paper is how can women contribute to the creation of a better and more sustainable global culture in your generation, right? So that things will be very different very quickly because of climate change. And the question is somebody's, or the issue is somebody has to lead and somebody has to be creative rather than being afraid and reacting right? The other alternative is something happens and you react, right? And you're in sort of survival mode and you're sort of afraid. You have to, you know, somebody's got to lead and somebody's got to say, I'm not going to let that uh, scare me off, right? I'm going to still create something positive out of this. And um, I know that my students have already overcome so many obstacles that they are a very good section of the culture that would be able and willing to, to engage with that kind of activity. So then um, AUW and Lion, um, Melanie also, <laughs> she knows from, I have the Lion syllabus and it has all its SLOs, student learning outcomes, so um, we do have a weekly post. That's a major thing. And I'll talk about that in a minute after we get through this little list. Um, 
what I what I want you to write. Okay, every week after we've had two classes, um, you have a post. Now this week will be a little bit different because we're just getting started. But usually I assign some reading. So you read it and you write three things that really stood out to you, at least three things, right? And things that you wanna bring up in class or questions, or you wanna ask one of the other students about it. So, you know, start, you, you should, the class should be small enough that you can actually get to know the character, each other's character, so that when you read something, you can think, I want to ask that <laughs> fellow student, especially about this issue, right? Because, um, for example, so if, you, if Melanie is a softball player, right, Melanie? Is it softball? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, then, you, then when we're reading Artemis, Artemis is that sort of athlete type. You know, one of you might say, well, Melanie, are you in softball because you really were that type, right? Or are you in it because it's a way to get a good scholarship to college? Or <laughs> People can be in it for different reasons. And it really, you know, they have a very different archetype. So, so Melanie, would you say that the women in your softball team are, are really, they're not, they're not all just sports loving women. They're there for different reasons. Um, honestly, I think that if you make it all the way to college playing a sport, you have to love it to some extent. So really, I think everybody loves it still. <laughs> so do you actually, okay, the thing about Artemis is that she's, she tends to get into a sisterhood, right? And you have this bonding between women. Do you think that teams are kind of like that? Yes, definitely. Or at least they, they strive to be like that. Okay. okay, so that's where the sisterhood idea comes in. And yeah, and again, there were no sports for girls when I was in it, the law got passed when I was a senior in high school. So basically I missed it. Um, but it is really interesting to watch. And I know that I've had students at AUW from like I had, I've had students from Afghanistan and they are um, invited to do this, these like mountain climbing activities. NGOs will come in and get them engaged in all kinds of sports. In the summertime, mountain climbing, or one of them was a really good, um, what is that with the sword? <laughs> oh, what is that sport where you? you fencing. Know, fencing, yes. So one of them was a really good fencer, like national, international. And it really changed her life too, because she, it was her opportunity to travel. Anyway, there's all sorts of stories and all sorts of stuff out there. But if you use the goddesses, you can tie it to a certain pattern, right? And then you can say, you know, even if that isn't my thing, I'm going to have to be somewhat athletic in my life, right? I'm going to have to stay fit and stuff like that. So everybody has it a little bit and each person has certain of them more. Um, okay, so the weekly posts is that you read something, you, you write down three things, at least three that you wanna make sure gets talked about in class. And then you um, write three things about what you learned from the other students during the class. And then you write a final reflection on that day. What is my biggest thing that I learned that I might include in my final paper? How can women contribute to the creation of a better, more sustainable culture? So did the lesson today, is there something about women creating a, a, a flourishing culture from today's assignment that I think I might include in my final and why, right? And then you have those three papers. 
Um, so I say that you're meeting in breakout groups, but if it, the class is small enough, we'll just talk. The problem is I talk too much, obviously, but I'll just really try to be self-consciously aware about that. One thing that I try to do is just take notes and promise myself not to comment at all until everybody's done. <laughs> and so I'll try to do that. Um, I do get excited because I really like the things the students say, but you know, it's more important that you talk to each other. Um, and then every once in a while, when your papers are due, I'll have you formally present as if you're in a job and you have to give a, you have to run a meeting basically so that you get that practice or because oral communication, you know, that's one thing they want you to develop. Uh, reading. So the thing about the reading is that I, I, my course is about thinking synthetically, which means you tie everything together. So as you read for my class, you're starting to recognize how does, how does this connect to this and this and this and this. And that's a part of learning how to read, I think, because that's how you remember what you read is that you can get it in the back of your mind and stick it somewhere in your worldview. It's just part of the way you look at the world from then on. So I think that's learning how to read, reading for meaning, reading for, for life, right? Reading in order to live a better life. Um, let's see. And then this papers include um, information literacy, so at least one paper includes that and um, it's you process information. It's just that philosophy is about ideas. And so information literacy tends to be stuff you have to learn how to do to get a good job. Whereas philosophy, you're not gonna make any money on this. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so um, I don't have any assignments based on teamwork. I mean, partly because we're all remote. Um, it's definitely intercultural and it's lifelong learning, definitely. So, so attendance, um, if you're absent, I'm gonna post everything on the YouTube. Um, I'll just post it under fall 2021 women's issues. I, you know, I'm starting to have a lot of different classes on the YouTube and the name of the YouTube is um, Martha Catherine Beck. It's either Dr. Martha Catherine Beck <laughs> or Martha Catherine Beck PhD. I can't remember because I have two different ones. Um, one of them says Greek philosophy in it. So I'm, I, I, made a YouTube channel with 76 videos. They're all about the legacy of ancient Greek civilization in the era of globalization. And that's mostly my scholarship and my books and all that stuff. But I want this other one to be about my classes, right? As a teacher. And that one, I wanna have a lot more students, um, students talking. That's a, it's a really a different activity. Um, now, you can hand your in, in your post late, but just begin the post by explaining why it's late, okay? I'm very generous with allowing students to hand in things late and not lower the grade because I know a lot of you have obstacles. But what happened last semester, I can't let it happen again because I told the students, just do your other courses if you have a test, you know, you have to keep up with those classes, whereas philosophy is the big picture, so you can hold off. Well, too many of them held off too much. And I got 80 things to read the last week. <laughs> I can't read these. So there were students that handed in, I don't know, six or seven posts, things that had been 
due two months before. So I, it does matter that you get it in as soon as you can, right? But there are students definitely that have setbacks. And so two weeks is understandable. But um, really, just for your sake, try to get it, try to get, um, get it in as early as you can. Okay, so we have another person in the class. Is that true? Uh, yes. Hello, ma'am. Oh my gosh, we have a lot of more <laughs> people in the class. Okay, good. This is wonderful. Um, why don't I finish talking and then you can introduce yourselves, okay? Um, this is great. Um, let me just finish this part. Also, for those of you who came later, I am recording this and I'm going to post it on YouTube. So, um, so you won't have missed anything. All right, so I teach on Sunday, Monday, Bangladesh time, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, eight to 9.40. So I have two different eight o'clock classes, but then I have my office hours at approximately those same hours on the other three days of the week, just so, you know, you can remember when my office hours are. I can remember when my office hours are. I have, I live close to my grandkids. So for me, it's at night and I know that, you know, they'll already be going to bed. So I won't have missed something my son and his wife might want to do together with the grandkids. But if you need a different time, that's great. I don't. I can be pretty flexible, but of course there's an 11 hour difference. So, <laughs> so the window of opportunity is not real big, but we can work it out. Um, and here's the, here's the syllabus. Here's, so today we're working on the syllabus. And if we get to the section on the goddesses, which we might not, <laughs> but we'll see. And then, if we don't get to that, then I just won't assign this next thing and we'll do it next time instead of this. So we'll just cut that out right away. Um, but I'll post it. Everything will be posted on the Google Classroom. Then we do Artemis. She's the woods woman and the athletic one, the competitive one. So one day I wrote a book on this. And so the nice thing about that is I can... <laughs> I can uh, send you chapters from my book as long as you don't tattletale on me to the, to the publisher, okay? <laughs> um, so you read that book and then you bring your own examples of someone you know. And then the next time um, we talk about ecofeminism because an Artemis type would be an ecofeminist, a defender of the environment. Um, and then um, there's an article about an ecofeminist analysis of the ready-made garment industry in Bangladesh. Um, we could take another day for you if you want to think. Maybe I'll, I didn't put in an extra day for you to talk about some woman in the public eye in your country. But um, again, I'll, I might combine those for when you talk about example of women you know, and then also somebody in the public eye. So I might adapt that a little bit. Then Apollo is the god of reason. And the god of reason is a, is a male, but you can, we're gonna read about his trajectory, his life trajectory. And then students bring their examples of women they know who are in the sciences, math, medicine, and fields that demand intense intellectual training and expertise. Then Mary Rollstonecraft was a early feminist um, and she, she emphasized the importance of education as the first step toward equality. And then we read some stuff on women scholars in India and then excerpts from a book about when the Taliban took over in this woman's 
country, I think it was Afghanistan, and her mother, when she was 13, her mother told her that they should have a secret school in their house teaching the younger girls how to read because her mother didn't know how to read and she did not want these women to get stuck, right? Because they were illiterate. So anyway, the importance of education and then students bring their own examples. So then I give you a whole session to bring your own examples of women who are in medicine or um, PhDs or um, something that requires a whole lot of brain cells, <laughs> not power yet, just sort of um, expertise. Okay, scholars. Um, then there's Athena, the goddess of wisdom. And you can, we'll talk about her. You give some examples. We talk about the early women's rights movement because that was about justice. That was about getting legal access to the legal system. And um, so that was that emphasis. And we'll do some readings on women's movements in um, these countries, because I got them from a professor at AUW. She sent me some stuff. Um, and then you can start your research paper about some person or branch or organization that promotes women's rights. And it's due September 28th. Um, and then, so that's, I just put that in brackets. This is the time when you start doing that research. Then there's an example of a woman in the, in the West, women are becoming uh, authoritarians. Like they're following super hyper male domination guys and working for them and with them and like following right along. So that's important. And then students bring their own examples. And then students present their papers to the class. And I will have a four point rubric to follow. Then there's Demeter, the goddess of fertility. And you think about examples of her. Um, women in economics, this is a huge problem around the world, juggling family and career. And that's where Melanie can, it has a good example. Okay, so my example is when I was having kids, there was no way it was really hard. In Melanie's life, her mother and friends, it was much more normalized. And she can talk about the issues there. Um, and that's what Marxist and socialist feminism is about, is about the economic systems. Um, Hera is the wife of a powerful man who defends uh, the system. So we'll talk about that. Then there's readings from this organization called the Conservative Women of America that are very anti-feminist. So you can bring your own examples. I'm sure that's going on everywhere in the world. Then there's Persephone, the one who got raped and abducted. So this is the, the way women get mutilated, bodily mutilation. Uh, rape, um, all that abuse, rape, physical abuse, violence against women. Then there's Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. And she's really supposed to be a vision carrier. It's a totally different uh, kind of energy that would make woman, women inspire people, including other women, to give birth, not just to babies, but to artwork or to creating an organization, you know, women get motivated to give birth to some cultural cultural product, not just a, not just the baby. And then there's women in the arts, how they're portrayed. Then Hesta is Hestia is a reflective consciousness, one that looks back and looks at all the patterns. So then we'll read a couple articles about that. Um, which Melanie read for last time, but I think, you know, she wouldn't mind having <laughs> a break or going over it again. 
Then we have paper number two, and that is which combination of goddesses do I identify with most? And each of them has a dark side and all that. So we'll talk about that. Um, and then students present their papers. Then we talk about global feminism. Uh, there's a really long chapter in this book that I've scanned and students bring their examples and then post-colonial feminism. And then Sophia, the goddess of wisdom, brings them all together at the table and they all have to figure out how to work together. That's a chapter from my book. And then um, women and climate change, I think that's a big, big deal. Um, women and COVID, like how have women been affected by COVID? A lot of American women uh, lost their jobs or you know, cut back on their jobs, quit their jobs. I mean, so it's had this impact. And then during final week, you read your papers or your outlines about that topic. How can women create, contribute to the creation of a better culture? Um, so anyway, that's that. The weekly posts are due every Friday and there's 10 of them required. Um, and there's three papers. Okay, it's, there's no tests. Um, the references should include the date of the attachment. Okay, in the, in the Google Classroom, you don't always have to do the outside references. You have to do the accepted style. The references from attachments, um, there'll be the, I'll, I'll send you the bibliographic reference of my book because then that'll, that'll come up a lot. But otherwise, just the, the date the attachment was posted and the name of the attachment, right? Just so somebody can find it. That's the main thing. When you write something, the reason why you have to you know, do all that stuff is so that people can't just make stuff up and say, I got it from here. You know, The reader has to be able to trace it so that they know. People just can't say anything. Um, this is dishonesty. Yeah, making up references. <laughs> I, you know, I don't think falsifying data, all this stuff. The only possible dishonesty, I think, would be that research paper because the other ones are so closely connected to the class that um, it's it's pretty obvious. Um, so here's a way to avoid plagiarism is that every once in a while, the, the posts and the papers are really supposed to react to what we're doing in class. And then you're constantly adding to this, just this, like you're writing a book <laughs> to yourself or to somebody else. So every once in a while, a student will try to go to some outside source you know, and talk about feminist Jungian psychology and come in with something. And it's so obvious, right, that they took this from somewhere else. So if you are confused, right, it's often a student says, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to go find a site, cut and paste and put it in here. If you're confused, make sure to, to make an appointment with me. Um, another thing students do is they go and talk to each other. Now, if that's helpful, do it. But if it turns into this gossiping session where you're dissing the teacher, <laughs> don't do that, really, honestly. Um, just, just make sure that you come and talk to me if there's any confusion, right? Don't, don't you know do passive aggressive stuff. Just for your sake, <laughs> women are often resort to passive aggressive behavior because they can't confront. Any oppressed group will become passive aggressive because they cannot just address, be assertive, right? It's part of their oppression. But anyway, just make sure you just talk to me if you if you say, I don't want to know what I want to put on my post, we'll have a conversation. But I will say, well, what did you like about the reading, right? There aren't any answers. 
you are getting to understand your own mind, right? All I'm doing is giving you these readings that I hope will like trigger something. And then you have to figure, well, what did that trigger, right? And then you come to understand who you are, how you think, how you used to think, how you want to think, right? But your own thought process. Um, yeah, come prepared, stay down task. I am not much of an authoritarian person. I just absolutely trust students. And I don't know my experience, either the students are really good at faking it or they're really good students, which I, I think they are grown-ups. So I will treat you like a grown-up. Um, so I want the class to be literally creating a history of the women's movement and where it is today. So you're literally together writing a history book. Um, whether anybody will read our book, we can read our book. Oh, wow, very good. We have a lot of students. Um, so I don't know how you found out how to get in on the class, but that's fine. I'll <laughs> Why don't we, we have time. Why doesn't each student introduce herself and say where she's from and some of her experiences with sexism growing up, okay? Um, and let's just, uh, Shaunti, and why don't you say your name and I'll try to remember how to pronounce it, but no promises. So why don't you just start again? We only have one student from the US, but Melanie, you're just gonna have to uh, hang in there, I guess. Um, it's okay for Americans to just shut up and listen. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we've had enough. Everybody knows more than they should about us. Um, but okay, Shaunti, go ahead. Yeah, Professor. Just where you're from and just an example of sexism. Um, you can just give okay. one or two, whatever. So, okay, so I'm from Bangladesh, a countryside where women are basically facing a lot of issues regarding their studies because um, when they completed their 10th grade or 12th, their parents force, force them to get married off. And uh, sometimes they also willingly get married, but most of the time it's a force for them. Like most of my friends sometimes come to me and they just told me that Shanti, please never get married. Like something like that. After hearing that, I can realize that yeah, they're, they're not, happy in their marriage so um and also like men always thinks like they got some power from the god like which they are showing around us like in different sections so that's why i want to learn more to change at least my society society's mentality because here men thinks like women are nothing Okay, um, so Melanie, why don't you wait for a minute and we'll go with the other ones. And then you can see how does that compare with the US? Does that make sense to you, Melanie? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so go ahead, Kasturi. Um, so I'm from Nepal. I belong to a rural part of the country, but I'm currently living in city area. Uh, well, uh, I personally feel that there are not such problems related to sexism in the area I'm currently living in, but then Nepal is a country and, uh, and uh, the system that uh, people in the uh, going through is 
different. So uh, as per the news and information, I read through various sources. I got to know that there are still some uh, females in Nepal that are struggling to achieve uh, quality, quality education. <clears throat> they are also biased and dominated in the society because uh, I'm not really sure whether uh, all of the students and professor here are aware about uh, the fact that Nepal is a male dominated society where uh, most of the is on the hand of men. So because of that, uh, many women are uh, under them. And because of this, they don't uh, get to speak up as well. Uh, so again, due to this coronavirus, many, uh, many females are under domestic violence, which is a very sad thing. And I personally believe that uh, it's because of the uh, lack of education and awareness among them. Uh, the rural parts of the countries are very far from the central part because of which uh, it will take a um, very long time to uh, reach there and make them aware. Um, so if I talk about my uh, own birthplace, it will literally take me about three days to reach there from the central part. So. Uh, because of these things, uh, it's not always possible for us to uh, help women who are actually in need of our assistance as well. Okay, very good. I had a student once from Nepal and he lived up in the mountains and you had to walk like eight miles to get right down to the city. Um, yeah, okay. Nizali, go ahead. Hello, Professor. Nice to be in, the, in this class. So um, I'm uh, Nisali Uttara. I prefer calling me Nisali and I'm from Sri Lanka. So um, the reason for choosing this course is I'm very interested in uh, learning things of uh, women issues and other things regarding women's feminism and all. So I think um, as a society, we had identified Oh, many issues, women issues, but I think there are more issues than we identified yet. So I like, I love being identified them and uh, be the voice of the women who can't voice up. And so that's the reason I choose this course and I like to work with them. So yes, thank you. Yeah, okay. And you should think carefully about what you want to do your research paper on. Um, I mean, just one thing. I had a student, I don't know, a year ago or something. She wanted to, I don't know, she started a nonprofit or worked with a nonprofit that where, I think it was Afghanistan, where you talked to teenage girls about menstruation, right? Because they just, nobody ever talked to them about it or sexuality or anything like that. So there's so many, many dimensions of the way patriarchy makes life harder for women. So yeah, make sure to pick something that maybe other people wouldn't think of because that would be great. All right, Ume, go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Ume Hani. You can call me Hani. I'm from Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, I want to study in Omen issue because we can see many problems in our area for women. Where we can see Many women are doing a lot of work and many women are now members of the local government councils. But lots of people think uh, they are not, women are not able to work. They can't do anything. We should change uh, people's eye. 
and in our country there is uh, we can see uh, girls are suffering from rape it's a major problem in our country i think uh, we should learn about more about sexual our um, safe protection so i choose this subject okay good um yes. mahira yes hello i'm mahira hasan i'm from bangladesh uh, i'm really interested in taking this course because i want to learn new things about well, regarding women issues because nowadays we can see that women are uh, engaged in different types of administration authorities governments so i'm really interested in this uh, course yeah and we have seen that in uh, really in men uh, regarding sexism men it has a dominative nature since past and the sense of authority and controlling their attitude uh, in in their attitude and so i really want to know about this stuff Okay, good. Uh, fa Fayaza, Fahaza. Uh, yeah, ma'am. My name is Fayaza Marikar. You can call me Fayaza. Fayaza. Okay. Uh, I'm from Sri Lanka. And I, I'm growing up with the Muslim society, and I was worked with the Muslim people and so many women in Sri Lanka, uh, so many part. So I would like to. Uh, uh, I would like to notice uh, what is happening to the women, what they facing the problem and all. So mostly the women society in Muslims, uh, they are facing uh, marriage uh, in the divorce act. Uh, they don't have the rights to sign and the child marriage. There are many, many, many issues there. So I have to uh, learn more thing about that. And there are FGM problem. And in, in education advice, uh, the sexual education, you know, so I, I would uh, really want to uh, work with women. So uh, I really need to take this course. Thank you. Okay. So you could do your research on sex, sex yeah. education in your country or something like that if you want. Yeah, we yes. do have one article on FGM. So FGM is still going on? Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Oh, wow. I, I did the research about that. Wow. Okay, Toma. Yes. Hello, ma'am. I'm glad to see you here. And I am Toma Borma. You can call me Toma. I'm from Silet, Bangladesh. And um, I was growing in a garden area uh, where I saw uh, there are a lot of practices of early marriage. Um, they think that the people are think that uh, women are not able to take education. And uh, I saw there are 70% women are uneducated and um, just 30% women are educated. And also the society are not uh, give chance to take education for them. Um, and they just think that women are take born for uh, give birth a baby and um, that's why I want to take this course to know something more about women issues and which I can emulate to develop in our society the thinking that's why it's really need for me to take this course to know something more about this course okay. about women issues good thank you sure Sad, Sadia or Sadia? Uh, yes, Professor Sadia. Sadia, okay. Uh, hello, Professor. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, uh, I am Sadia to Silvia, and I am from Bangladesh. Uh, and uh, so I'm leaving currently. I'm leaving in uh, my home, um, and. Uh, I really want to take this course because like uh, nowadays, uh, many women who are not educated, they are facing lots of problems in their society and they don't have any knowledge about uh, sexuality, menstruation and uh, so on. So uh, in if I know more about the women issues, then I can be a 
a voice for my society and uh, help those people uh, who are deprived from their rights. And uh, most of the time, males male are uh, dominating uh, the women uh, for the sexuality and uh, these cases. So if the women have the knowledge about these things, then they can uh, raise their voice uh, in their society. So that's why I want to take this course. Thank you. Good. Uh, Fatima or Fatima? Yes, miss. I'm Fatima. Fatima, okay. Yes, miss. Nice to see you here. I'm from Bangladesh. Now I'm, uh, I'm on campus. Uh, so I'm really interested in this course as a, uh, from my childhood, I was living in such a country where there is no, uh, no right for, uh, for women, and women are deprived from their rights in all sectors. So hopefully you add me in this course. Okay, good. Dolana? <clears throat> yes, Professor. Uh... I'm Dolana Khatun. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, and <clears throat> I I live in a rural area in Bangladesh. And here I feel, uh, <clears throat> in our society, most of the women are not educated, uh, and they have not uh, uh, proper knowledge about sexual education. And uh, most of the time, they are uh, uh, like violating by the women, uh, sorry, by the men. And in our society, uh, we can see that uh, <clears throat> uh, men are dominating, uh, like uh, women are dominating by the men in our society. And they are always, uh, uh, they always think that they are most powerful uh, and women are nothing to do in our society. So I want to, <clears throat> Uh, know about women's issue and uh, uh, I can I want to do some things for uh, my society's women that's why I uh, need this course okay good Sh Sh Shamia Shamia is that are you there uh, yes, ma'am. It's not Shamia. It's Shima Shin. Shima Shin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Professor. Uh, it's Shima Shin. I am from Bangladesh. My hometown is Chittagong. Uh, I really wanted to take this course because, uh, first of all, I am a woman and in my area, there are lots of women are victim of early marriage. After 10 or 12 grade, their family forced them to marry. Even there are lots of girls who are less than 15. They are also victim of this kind of work. For this reason, uh, these girls and, and these girls are are face lots of problems uh, during their pregnancy and even they are they, they are dead. So I want to take this course and make something new and want to change the mentality of the society. Okay, good. Risti? Risti? Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm Risti Adhikari and from Bangladesh. And I'm I'm from T state also, and here women are facing so many problems. Uh, they can't raise their voice uh, against their own situation in the society because they are not uh, self confident and not well educated. Uh, so I really want to solve these problems from our society uh, by gaining more knowledge. Uh, so I really need this course. Good. Thank you. Famida. Famida. Are you there? Yes, Professor. Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me, right? Yeah. And how do you pronounce your name? Hello? How do you pronounce your name? It's Famida. 
Pamida. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, guys. I hope you're doing well. And hello, professor. So I really want to take this course because uh, I'm already working with uh, women empowerment issues, different organizations. And I have seen uh, different problems of women that they go through, not, not only because of the society, uh, sometimes it's also because of their set mentality of the society. The women think like they're not that much important part of the society and as it, it increases a lot of issues, like not being able to engage in the society or, or they don't think they're powerful like men. So I'm really concerned about the issues and I really hope I will get the lessons which can help them. So maybe that's for me and also for the community. Okay, so then we just have Melanie, but let me just um, say one thing here that uh, there's so many dimensions to look at it, but but I think a number one, uh, a number of you have said it's the mentality. So, right? So it isn't just the behaviors, it's the mentality and it's how women have internalized a lot of this stuff. And so they sort of accept it or they blame themselves or they defend the patriarchy. So when you have the goddesses, it's about your inner life, right? It's about how you feel. It's about emotions. And then also we talk about women's rights, right? So what women are doing in the public, like how many are lawyers, how many are doctors, but this course is trying to touch a little bit on everything, right? You could take a whole class on women's poetry. You could take a whole class on women's history. You could all take a whole class. I just try to get you started. And then, you know, you take other classes and then those classes just keep expanding your understanding. So the thing about philosophy is I think that ideas matter and mentalities matter a lot, right? It's not just behavior. It's how people interpret behavior. It's what behavior people think is good or bad. And that's a mentality. So that's my little philosophy lecture for the day. Okay, Melanie, go ahead. Hi, I'm Melanie. Um, I'm from Missouri. And I'm really interested to hear everybody else's, all of y'all's perspective um, of women's issues in your countries. Um, because here we, I heard a few of you talk about arranged marriages and that's not really a thing here in the United States. Um, after we finish high school, we're either expected to go start working or go to college. So I'm super excited to hear about all of y'all's um, experiences. Another thing, Melanie, you might eventually, at least after college, want to do some great uh, gap years and go work at an NGO in a developing country that supports women, <laughs> right? So, I mean, there's lots of possibilities. Um, all right, so we just have a couple minutes left. So what I'm going to say is that I will get all of you, I've written all your names down. I don't know how you found the class, but how did you find the class? Because <laughs> it's on a totally different website, you know, but that's all right. I guess I'll leave it. Um, I'll put you on the Google Classroom. I'll invite you and then I'll put the announcement I'll put the syllabus for some of you came when I'm in the middle of talking about it. I'll put the paper rubric and the speaking rubric. And um, so I'll explain, I'll try, actually I got a criticism last semester and I try to pay attention to these things that some of those announcements were just way too long and confusing. So um, I'll try to keep it shorter, but just for those of you who missed the discussion of the post, and you don't have to do a, a post, you don't have to hand it in till the end of the week, but what you should do for today is start the document and just, just um, 
uh, write down three reactions, right? Reactions to my description of the readings of the class or reactions to what the other students said. And it's not a big deal today because I mean, there wasn't any, you know, any reading, but just get yourself in the habit of thinking you don't have to please the professor. You or the thing that's going to please the professor is if you really start asking yourself, what do I think? And um, the nice thing about teaching at AUW is that all of you have had to do that, right? Or you wouldn't be women in a developing country who's, who've gotten this far, right? You have been able to think outside of the box. You have been able to look at your other girlfriends or women and go, I don't want that, right? I want something else. And so I think all of you are pretty independent. And this class is just going to give you free reign, you know, just think outside the box, just keep being creative in your thinking. And for example, if you're reflecting on the class today, go ahead and connect it to something else, connect it to some other experience, connect it to something else you've read, connect it to some, something related to AUW. The, I mean, I'm, we're all hoping to get back to campus, but the, I mean, it's so important that creating this climate of women supporting other women. So make sure your number one rule as an AUW uh, sister is that you don't criticize other women, right? You make sure you have empathy for them you have, you say, I don't understand where she's coming from, but, you know, in a patriarchy, women get wounded. And so when they act out, you know, from the point of view of the wounding, you have to figure out how to heal those wounds, how to get beyond them, and how not to let patriarchy, you know, get to you. <laughs> so, um, the other thing, I, we have three minutes. Um, I'm just not sure now with the size of the class, if you'd rather get into breakout rooms or if you'd rather that each student gets a chance to talk and um, we, you know, everybody within the course of the time would get it one or two chances to talk. So I'll, if uh, I'll actually start out next time, maybe taking a vote, or maybe we'll just play it by ear and see what works. I'm not quite sure how to handle that, um, but we'll we'll um, we'll try it one way, try it another way, and see where where it ends up. But I'll have the assignments posted, and I'll um, I hope that it will be pretty clear. And don't agonize about what is it she want? What does she want? Please. <laughs> That's what do I think? Go ahead. Just go ahead and ask yourself that. I don't care what she thinks about what I think. This is what I think. That's, that's what I want. Um, so we have one more student here, Amina. Do you want to introduce yourself and just say where you're from and what interested you about the class? Okay, anyway, I will, um, I will post this onto the YouTube channel. Here's another thing I want you to do is always remind me, um, oh, from Myanmar, okay. Um, remind me to start the recording and I, I'm telling you, I will forget every day all semester. <laughs> I can't believe I remembered today. But um, that's not interrupting me. That's actually helping me out. So in the middle of a sentence, get Professor Beck. <laughs> and um, I just think it's funny. I will never, I will be very grateful to you if you, if I have forgotten once again and you remind me, okay? Okay, so 
Does anybody 